the basic building information that's embedded in the geometry of your Euclid model. If you open up the object info dialog, you'll start to see at the top here the uh, class and name, rotation, etc. I encourage you to rename it to um, whatever your project is called. So I'm going to call this Worcester uh, 214. Uh, the rotation it, it's, um, it is based on the, the rotation that we already applied here. The terrain, um, we'll explain later in the semester, but um, try to select the terrain that best approximates your location. This is going to affect the wind velocity at your uh, building. And in my case, for the, the um, campus here, I would say it's closest to the suburbs. And uh, don't change any of these other, um, these other uh, parameters. Now that's uh, overall for your building. If you click on your zone, you'll see it. It lists it as zone one. And um, if you click into the zone, you can click on your roof and see that it is a roof construction, exterior roof, outside boundary condition, outdoors. Now for Worcester Hall, and the computer lab, this is not an outdoor condition. It's an indoor condition and it shares a face with the floor above it. And theoretically, there's no heat transfer that's occurring between the computer lab and the room upstairs. Now in real life, there is uh, because the internal loads are different, but it's close enough that, and, and I would encourage you all to use this type of uh, logic, that um, it's essentially adiabatic. And what adiabatic means is that there's no heat transfer. And so for the boundary condition, I'm going to change this to adiabatic. And, um, and therefore, no heat will flow through that. I'm going to do the same for my wall. I'm going to change that to adiabatic, the, the wall to the corridor. And then this wall, which shares it with the neighbor, um, I'm going to also make that adiabatic. Um, and finally, my floor there, um, it's automatically sees it as the ground, but I'm going to make that adiabatic as well uh, because it actually is uh, shares a um, heat with the um, floor below it. So effectively, the only heat transfer surfaces I have here are this facade and this facade. And this facade has the construction exterior wall. We'll have to remember that for later. And so does this, um, the same construction, exterior wall. Um, it also is sun exposed and wind exposed, which is important and we'll be using. So uh, that all looks good. Um, I'm also going to inspect these. They all are part of the building shading group, so that's good. And these are part of the site shading group, so that's good. So. Everything is in order here. Looks like we're good. Um, if you wanted to name these, you can name it here. So I could call this um, North, uh, I'll call it Tree North. And I can call this Tree West 1. And West 2. And I'll show you where that all goes. Um, you can see it, it writes this file. It, what it does is it writes a text file, which we can see um, in separately. So uh, two things to do here. I'm going to save this as uh, 04 uh, finished geometry .idf, and then I'm also going to save my SketchUp file because my SketchUp file includes, I'm going to clear the Open Studio information, and it includes my background image and it includes my True North and Project North. And this way I can easily toggle between these um, later if I want to make any changes. So I'm going to go up to here and press Save As. I'm going to save this to my desktop for now. And I'm going to call this Worcester 214 um, Background.
and please do the same for yours. Make sure to keep those SketchUp files and OpenStudio IDF files separate.